Well, it's a busy week on the campaign trail for Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. They've each appeared at back-to-back -back rallies right across the country, now just eight days out from the American election. One moment, though, that stood out from yesterday's Trump rally at Madison Square Garden seems to have given the Democrats some ammunition against him. We're right there by a wide open border. Where are my proud Latinos at tonight? You guys see what I mean? It's wide open. There's so many of them. These Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. They do. They do. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Well, joining me live is former White House Chief of Staff and now Bondi Partners consultant Mick Mulvaney. Mick, lovely to see you today. Uh, do you think this controversial joke will hurt Trump? Yeah, ordinarily, Holly, the answer is no. Um, but an election that is going to be as tight as this one is, it is not lost on many uh, political uh, commentators here, that there's over 400,000 Puerto Rican voters in Pennsylvania. Keep in mind, Puerto Rico is not a state. But residents of Puerto Rico are considered American citizens, and if they establish residency in the U.S., like millions of them have, they can and they do vote. Most of them are concentrated in New York, which is not really a swing state, or in Florida, that it's not really a swing state. But there is several hundred thousand in Pennsylvania, and this is the kind of mistake that's made very late in a campaign. Maybe a, maybe a, a candidate can't bounce back from it. It might um, actually move the needle. Ordinarily on this program, we go over stuff every single week that doesn't move the needle. This might actually move the needle mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania, uh, which is why you're seeing the Trump campaign today try to distance himself from those comments. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because Pennsylvania could be the biggest prize. It has 19 electoral votes. It's arguably one of, if not the most critical swing state in this election. Trump, as you said, has tried to distance himself from the joke, potentially signalling that they might be a little bit worried at the moment. Should they have vetted the comedian's material to avoid this kind of overshadowing just days from the election? Yeah, I mean, you have to look at the at the people running the Trump campaign and go, what what were they thinking about this? Keep in mind, it was very early in the day, and I get that, and it wasn't like he was introducing Donald Trump, but this is a Trump event. It's on Trump's stage. They want the attention. This is a very popular comedian amongst the younger folks. I don't know who he is because I'm old, but apparently this, this gentleman is very, very popular. So they were doing this in order to try and expand the base a little bit and reach out to younger voters. So yeah, they're ultimately responsible for what gets said on their stage, which again, I think is why you're seeing themselves distance from this today. Look, we've talked about um, the 100,000 Palestinian Americans who might vote in Michigan. Might they move the needle a little bit in Michigan in this race? Michigan, another swing state. And as of tonight, I think for the next couple of days, we'll be watching very closely any polling data for these, these 400,000 odd Hispanic voters in Pennsylvania to see if this has moved any of mm. them off of Donald Trump. Oh, well, the Democrats are definitely jumping on this and using it as ammunition. Kamala Harris has just released a new campaign ad in response to this joke. Let's take a listen to that now. A floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I will never forget what Donald Trump did. He abandoned the island and offered nothing more than paper towels and insults. Puerto Ricans deserve better pretty quick to get that out. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, the abandonment of Puerto Rico is not right. I actually ran the Office of Management Budget during the Hurricane Maria reconstruction efforts. We threw a bunch of money, not just paper towels at Puerto Rico, but that's politics, right? It's the, it's the oftentimes what the candidates themselves say and gets played back. And there's no denying this comedian behind the Trump sign, which you saw in that ad, said what he said. And in this day and age, Holly, the media moves so quickly, that ad might be on TV in several swing states by the end of the night tonight here. So yeah, it's 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 an issue. It's I don't listen, it's not I don't think it's the last big story of this week. I'm expecting two or three more sort of bigger shoes to drop, but certainly this is an unforced error in the Trump campaign, and they are trying to figure out how to recover from it tonight. Let's talk about voter turnout. I mean, more than 43 million Americans have already cast a ballot in this presidential election. It's lining up to be an historic turnout here. Where are we with the polls at the moment? We know the US loves a good poll, uh, but the polls seem to be converging in the swing states. What are you seeing at the moment? 
Um, a couple of things on polls. Yes, um, they show things very, very tight. But keep in mind, in 2016, at this exact same point in the campaign, Donald Trump was down by seven points to Hillary Clinton, and he won. In 2020, he was down by 10 points at this exact same date to Joe Biden and very nearly won. So the Trump team feels very confident about the fact they're polling even in so many of these states. It feels like a very, very close election, Holly. It has for a long time. Could it break one way or the other in the next couple of days? Possibly. I think more likely what you're going to see is a long, drawn-out decision-making. We might not know who wins until Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe even into the weekend of election week. So, yeah, the polling is is, is mm. close. Everything's close. The Trump team feels pretty good about it, but uh, pretty soon we'll uh, we'll see the results. Mick, we do have to wrap things up, but we've seen, I mean, Hollywood stars, we've got Leonardo DiCaprio, Beyonce on the weekend, Bruce Springsteen all coming out to back Kamala. Does this actually work in your perspective? Do voters really want to be told by Hollywood stars how they should vote? No, the only reason that matters very quickly is that the Taylor Swift endorsement might count because her followers include disproportionately large numbers of young single women and young single women don't vote very heavily in this country. Again, we do not have compulsory voting. If the Taylor Swift endorsement can bring 15, 20, 25,000 new voters to Kamala Harris, that can make an, uh, an impact. But ordinarily, <laughs> nobody listens to Hollywood for who they should vote for. Mick Mulvaney, you're the perfect person to talk to just eight days out from the presidential election. Thanks so much for your time. Chat to you soon. Thanks, Holly.